Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Interviewing Wednesdays. It is May 26, 2021. For those people on Zoom, if you have questions, please just open up the chat box, put your questions into the chat box as soon as you think about them. As a, and as our speakers take a break, we'll be sure to get those questions answered for you. For those watching on Facebook right now, please just send your questions in the comment field. I am monitoring that feed and I'll be sure to get those questions answered for you. Please note this event is being recorded and is currently live on Facebook. The recording will be on the Career DFW Facebook page and the Career USA YouTube channel for others to view in the future. By participating in this event, and if you post a comment in the chat box or have your microphone or camera on, you give consent for your comment, name, and picture to appear. Well, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Jeff Morris. Back in 2008, I started a website called Career DFW to help those who were unemployed in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. In 2012, I started a second website called CareerUSA.org to help people outside the Dallas-Fort Worth area. I've written a book called What I've Learned About Your Job Search That You May Not Know. It's available on Amazon. Since 2007, I've been facilitating and leading the North Dallas Plano Career Focus Group. The group's been around since the late 1990s. I took it over in 2007. And I'll tell you about our upcoming programming that we're having this Friday at the end of this session. And since 2017, I've been a member of the practice interview team, and you'll hear more about that in just a couple of minutes. Well, back when uh, COVID hit and we couldn't meet in person, I asked Mark and Walt uh, if they put something together about interviewing, uh, that we do a weekly workshop. So uh, we're now on round number four. So uh, gentlemen, I'll let you introduce yourself. Mark? All right, well, thank you, Jeff. And uh, today, I'm uh, participating just like you. Walt is giving the presentation. So I want to encourage you to ask questions and I'll be monitoring the chat very closely. So put your questions into the chat. And uh, I also encourage you to put into chat if you're a first timer here today, because those who've been in the job search for a while have a lot to share with you and let us know if you're a first timer and we'll start doing that, including these uh, weekly interview sessions. So the pit crew, I lead the pit crew. I've been doing that for since uh, early 2014. And about a year before that, I was involved with the pit crew as a volunteer. I was laid off three times towards the end of my career in a 10 year period. And so I walked in your shoes and I feel very grateful that I got an opportunity to be involved with the pit crew and lead the pit crew. And I wanna encourage you to take advantage of the pit crew and we offer practice interview sessions. The interviewers are, have all been hiring managers and as part of their professional responsibility. So the people who give you the interviews are pros. They had to hire people for their, to work for them or to work for their company. And uh, it takes about 45 minutes. It's based on a resume and a job description that you provide. So it's very customized and personalized to your experience and also to your, to, to your interview situation. So if it's a first round interview, we give a slightly different interview than if it's a second or third or fourth round interview. C-level interviews are different as well. So it's all tuned to your situation and it's completely free. There's no charge at all. It's all done by volunteers. And uh, we meet any day of the week. We do this virtually now on Zoom, the same technology that Jeff is using. So you can have a practice interview any day of the week. So when you're ready, just send your information in to dallaspitcrew at gmail.com. So that's the email address there. And uh, I'll go to work setting up an interview for you. So include in that email the times that you are available, the best times of day for you for plus two and plus three days. And uh, oh, probably 80% of the time we're able to get it done in two days, but sometimes it takes three days before we can organize the interview. Uh, so that's how that works. Just send your information in, resume, job description, and availability time to dallaspitcrew at gmail.com, and I'll set up your practice interview. I uh, encourage you to link in with me. Just search for Mark A. McDonald on LinkedIn, or you can search for the pit crew, and I'll show up very close to the top. And just send me a note that says, you know, we met on Wednesday afternoon at the interview Wednesday session, and that's good enough for me. But I got to say, I got about 20 people in my queue that have not sent me a note. So if you don't send me a note, I don't know where I met you. You could be from, you know, 
Nigeria. So I, I just don't pay attention to those. So send me a note and I'll add you to my network and that'll help you find uh, people who work in your target companies. Uh, I also do one more thing besides running the pick who I coach and I coach on just one question. So I'm, I'm very focused on this. And the question is, why did you leave your last job? So there you go. Since I got laid off three times, I'm, I consider myself an expert on how to answer that question. But not only that question, but any other questions that may follow up based on your situation. So we can have a confidential discussion about your situation and we'll storyboard how to answer that question and then how to answer any follow on questions. And it may not be your last position. It may have been a gap in your employment. It may have been a series of short term, uh, you know, uh, I coached a lot of people who, you know, way back in 2008, when things were so bad, they couldn't find a job that lasted more than six months. You know, you probably remember that was a very difficult economic time. And so that's how we explain it. But situations like that, that may cause you some anxiety, we can work out and uh, a very positive brief uh, explanation. So one-way interviews. We're now, we're gonna talk about that today. Walt's got some great stuff. The pit crew now offers one-way interviews. If you would like to practice a one-way interview, just send me an email. Everything begins with the Dallas Pit Crew at gmail.com email address. And uh, the way, that, way it'll work, I'll give you the questions in advance and then you'll get a link to go to the tool that we use, which has been donated by Easy Hire. That's the tool we use. So I wanna give them credit for that. And then you do the one-way interview and you get access to the video and no one else sees it unless you choose to share it. So that's the way it works. And uh, just send me an email if you'd like to practice a one-way interview. Thanks. Well. well. Good afternoon, everyone. And I also like to help people with interviewing skills. And I do it a little bit differently than the picture, which I hardly endorse and recommend. A, a nice panel mock interview is great practice. But I suggest that perhaps you want to do something first besides that, and that is really what are the basics of interviewing? What's the basics of differentiation? What's the basics of selling ourselves in an interview? And I claim that it's three things. It's who we are, what we do, and how we help. Many interviews I've had uh, show a lot of emphasis on I do, background experience, some to do with I am, and that's my soft skills and my personality and characteristics, culture fit type things. Very, very few in, you know, have anything about I help. So how do we sell those things? So the interview is free. It's on Zoom, do it on Tuesdays. Look at my LinkedIn page, about page. It gives you some more details. But basically uh, you, you send me an email and I'll sign you up and give you some dates and register you. It's held on Zoom. I do it on Tuesdays from 10 to 12. I do two people at a time. You actually interview each other. I give you the questions as you're when you're in the interviewer and I record responses. And then following the interviews, which are recorded, you get a copy of your interview. And we'll go through some feedback and coaching. We cover these 11 basic categories of questions. And we have one over each to, to ask you. And so it's kind of a choppy interview. It's more the learning side and the workshop side than it is the mock. It's definitely not a mock interview. It's something where we can say, uh, let me pay attention to the fundamentals and then we can start practicing the fundamentals. And by the way, I also offer through Easy Hire as uh, Jeff and Mark uh, have capabilities. And if you come the first time and you wanna practice that on a one-way interview, then you can take those types of loving questions and do it online through a one-way interview and practice it that way. So I'll offer the same thing. So everything Mark said about me, the way it's handled is the same way that it would be handled with me. So it gives you a chance to do that. So if you like to sign up, just send me that email. I'd love to connect with you, but I'm like Mark. I always suggest that you, to differentiate ourselves, we always send a personal note, something that says how I met you, how I know you, or whatever it might be. Uh, Always send a thank you note when people connect. Uh, if you don't want to follow up and have a conversation and build your relationship for networking, that's the path to go. So I'd be glad to connect with you the same way. So I'm going to give you a little information in the chat window about me. So call me up, send me an email, whatever, and I'll be glad to sign you up so that we can experience learning without squirming. Great. Thank you very, very much.
All right, well, today is session number four, video interviewing. So gentlemen, take it away. Oh, you know, I need to make you all co-host. Hold on a second. I'm slipping I'll be out. the presenter and Mark will answer all the questions. All right, I'm, uh, there we go. The sun's got me thrown. It's a nice sunny day out. I'm, I'm not used to the sun. All right, you should be good to go. It's ready, okay. There we go. Let me just, I just got a few slides to cover and then it's the Waltz show. So, video interviewing today. So, uh, session number four out of 13. And um, if you're brand new today, uh, Walt and I, we used to do this on face to face. When we met face to face, we'd have a little education session at the end of the meetings and they were pretty, uh, ad hoc. So we talked about whatever the uh, people who had come to the meeting wanted to ask about, you know, they would ask us questions and we'd provide answers. Uh, when we became uh, virtual, uh, Jeff you know, has these series of topics, one each day of the week about resumes and LinkedIn and networking. And so interviewing was one of those as well. So Walt and I put together a formal presentation of all the things involved in uh, being a good interviewer and being successful in interviewing. And it turned out to be about 20 hours worth of stuff. So we broke it down into 13 sessions. We can go through the whole series in one quarter of a year. And so we are on session four now. And I just want to give you a little structure because if there's a particular topic here that you'd like to freshen up on, you can go to the Career USA YouTube channel and take a look at the presentation that we did uh, back in January, February, and March. So we did this exact series uh, the first three months of the year. And so the first five topics are about preparing to interview and we're on topic number four out of that five. Then the second group of five is about effective interviewing and you see, can see some really good things there, demonstrating enthusiasm, how to discuss compensation. What if you're changing careers or industry? Industry, so uh, that group of five is a really good group. And then uh, the last three are kind of advanced topics that build on the previous 10. And, uh, but also cover some very important things like uh, target, inter uh, target companies and informational interviews and how do you deal with difficult interviewers. And then uh, the, my favorite there at the end, which is uh, common mistakes that people make that we see all the time. And so maybe knowing about them will help you avoid them. So that's the whole pit crew. Uh, series and uh, today's topic is video interviewing presented by Walt. You want to take over now, Walt? There you go. Yes, sir. And I'll be me... I'll be uh, watching the chat. So if right, thanks, watch, Mark. Put it in. I appreciate that. Because uh, whenever you start your video, your chat window likes to hide. <laughs> so that'll be good to have. So my goodness gracious, we, we're in a job search and holy cow, all the stuff we have to learn how to do. Uh, we got to figure out what we want to be. We got to figure out how to do resumes and we got to do LinkedIn stuff. Oh my gosh, that's a lot of work. And we, I'm putting in staff and then everybody has opinions on everything and there's not a book that just tells us the answer. It'd be nice if we could just drive up to the job search building and they got a window and say, I'd like uh, one, uh, one uh, resume building, some networking and an interviewing and a chocolate shake, you know, and just have that handed to us and we'd walk out and there, it'd be all there, okay? Well, unfortunately, that's not the way it is today. And so then along comes COVID and, and, and it, all it did was accelerate this thing called video interviewing. Uh, it's bound to happen, going to occur, but that just gives us one more thing we have to pick up and learn and don't know how to do and be effective at. Because there's just, you know, let's just face it. People will see things that will cause them not to select us. And some say the pessimistic way is uh, the whole process is one of deselection rather than one of selection. Well, let's stay positive and say, okay, we want to be one amongst the selected. So how can we do that? So today I'm just going to focus on the video part. There'll be a little bit about interviewing, but really on the video part so that we can be effective with using video. And that's quite important. Uh, there's a lot of things going on today, so I'd like to ask you, and you can uh, hit your space bar or jump in or put something in chat, uh, you know, how many of you have done 
a video interview. Anita, if you want to speak, you got to either hit your space bar or unmute yourself. Could you repeat that question, please? Yeah, how many of you have, have experienced a video interview? Hi, this is Lee. It was a little bit of a technical difficulty on my part. Go figure. Um, I have, a, it was it was actually very interesting, but attending the South Lake Focus Group has really kind of provided me with a lot of tools to, to get it done good and well. And so, um, but I know I'm not the best at it because it's not intuitive to me yet. I've had a couple of Zoom interviews. Is that the kind of thing you're talking about? Or is sure. it- uh, Whatever product, just as long as it's video. Yeah, there there have been a couple of uh, interviews that were Zoom interviews. Basically, I called a you know, in one case Microsoft Team, the other a uh, a Zoom interview. Right. Okay. Anybody else? Well, for those who have and those who have not, uh, we can still answer this question: What's the challenges? What What's the difference? And what are we What are we faced with? Uh, and challenge to do an effective video interview. The feedback is not there. You can't okay. get the. You can't get the. You know. The, there's not the what I call it. It's not a what I call a personal space. There's literally a a wall there, in terms of trying to figure out what the feedback is. Uh, particularly on on the one way interviews, it's hard. Plus on the two way. We have to look into the camera and we really can't watch their reactions to, to what we're seeing them uh, do to, to our, our responses in, in our conversation. So it's difficult to make a connection, right? Okay, anything else? Any equipment issues? Well, Why not? A on the chat, they talk about, Leslie says, you can't really see the interview well or not at all. Jason okay. said, no read on body language. Right. Lee says the lighting or the display view uh, all set all set prior to remaining to remain engaging. Um, and Ann says, uncomfortable when one person had video live and the other interviewer did not. Right. They were hiding their, hiding their right. camera. So they're all kinds. They have one way they have, they can see you, but you can't see them. Then they have the recorded interviews, all those kind of things. So we'll talk a little bit about that today. Let's see if we can pick up a few tidbits that will help us really come across well uh, in a video interview. A little humor to start the day. So, and back up a little bit. I know you all are just dying to know this. What's the difference and what is AVI and asynchronous interviews? And so we'll kind of go to the basics. Uh, so technologically, there was uh, back in 1992, Microsoft developed a file that would hold both video and audio streams, which is two different methodologies. It's kind of like your phone. You have voice on your phone and you have data on your phone. Lots of times you have voice problems, but when you do texting, uh, it goes through pretty well. And that's because data is handled a lot easier than voice. So it, it's similar to that if you were trying to compare. So the asynchronous interview is those one-way deals, which we just love, where, where they get to ask us questions and we just have to look into the camera and, and answer. So they record themselves and uh, we record ourselves and they get to go back and look at us. And, and so those are the kind of things that are going on. So what's really happening? So COVID-19 has really pushed it forward. Uh, we were doomed to go to this way, if that's the way you want to look at video interviews. But as we all, I mean, everybody in the interviews, just many, many, many say, you know, I, I like change and I love learning. I said, okay, well, here's change and we're going to love learning how to do this. So I'm glad you're in that mode. So uh, let's look at what's going on. I hired you, uh, which is uh, uh, pretty popular. We'll talk a little bit about it later. But they had a 24% increase. Uh, Knockery quadrupled its customers. Bid recruiter doubled its staff. So it's really growing. So there's there's uh, all kinds of uh, software pieces out there to do this kind of thing. But it's really growing. And, I, and it's predicted that we're still going to do a lot of video interviews. 
even though uh, we could meet face to face more. So I think it's going to be a lot more video and less face to face, particularly in the screening area. They want to do screening. So I think that'll be huge. So what do employers see? Why do they like this thing? And they say, well, it's really efficient for us. So let's be an interviewer, let's be a company, let's be in their perspective, which is a good way to interview, is, okay, what is it? Well, interviews can be shorter. Oh, we have a tendency to talk too long. And so what they can do is they set a time limit that way we can't talk any longer than that. And that helps shorten it. They don't like hearing us that long. And they can do more candidates uh, through, through the video process. And there's a lot of flexibility. You can uh, generally, you can choose to do your video interview at a time you choose. There usually is a time limit on, accompl on accomplishing that. And then they can go back and look at it and they can have whoever they want look at it. So they don't have to get together. And it's really hard today in the business world to get three people or four people together for a meeting. And so interviewing is one of the last items on the to-do list because we're too busy doing crisis management and crisis tasks because we didn't hire the person that would help us get out of that mess in the first place. So a lot of stuff's going on and anything can delay an interview. Anything can delay the hiring process. Uh, a lot, it's not management by walking around now. It's, it's a crisis management. There's always stuff going and fills our day. We got to pay attention to those. So one of the nice thing is, is I can look at it again, I can rewatch it, and I can also take each person, same set of questions, and compare side by side as to how they respond. So they see it really as a fair way to really screen the candidates. Now that's their perspective. Now, do we think it's fair? Uh, not as much as they think it's fair. It's a little bit different on us because now we have to uh, learn how to be uh, TV personalities and learn how to look in the camera, even looking into the camera is not easy. Uh, I don't enjoy looking into the camera. I, I would really like to look at faces and have that connection and contact like we mentioned some of the challenges were. And now I have to look into a mechanical device and act like I'm talking to somebody. Uh, so that takes some practice and some learning to do. And I'm still working on that as I speak. And they use some different judging methods. And so some watch all the videos and some use artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is growing. So we already use artificial intelligence in job search. It's called the applicant tracking system. They enter keywords and then we match through artificial matching and comes out with the keyword match and says, okay, you, we, we'll give you a call, we'll match you. Well, only 2% of those applications get responded to. It's a very slow way to try to get a job. So if you're spending all your time trying to match keywords and get somebody to find you, I would suggest you uh, reduce the amount of time doing that and put more time in the networking area, but that's another topic. So one of the things that AI can do is they look at how we say, what we say, if they're still looking at words, you know, and then our gestures, okay? And some look at the facial micro expressions, which has got some uh, definite concerns about that out there in the marketplace. And I'll talk about that with however you Some experts think that these Fairness and privacy and bias and all that is really an issue and a problem and, and can be and can be in, incorrect. Of course, those who use it say, oh, it's wonderful, it, it does good things. We, but they do the same thing. They look up and say, what's the basis? What are we looking for? Then they insert that into the system and then, then they use that for the criteria to judge us. And so whatever they put in is biased as well, as well as doing it any other way. But let's take a look at Amazon for a second. Can you believe they've got about 1,300, I mean, 1,000, 1,300,000 employees worldwide. And that doesn't count the thousands of seasonal and contract workers that they have. They hired 500,000 people in 2020. That's 1,300 a day. Right now, and I went out on their website, and as of the 20th, they have 53,096 open positions in 90 categories. And as an example for the categories, I hit the wrong button. Hang on a second. I'll get that back. Uh, here's an example. So I know this is kind of hard to read, but that figure right there, and I can't even read it, it says 14,228 open positions in software development alone. So here's a sample of their categories. So they've got a huge number of open positions. So there was some stuff out there on the web where Beth Galetti was interviewed and she's the senior VP of human resources and said, well, for our corporate jobs, 
where we go through a full interview process, we had to pivot literally overnight to virtual interviews. You just can't hire that many people on face-to-face -face interviews anymore. You have to have some kind of help that go through that process and grow. So they conducted over 200,000 virtual interviews in the past year. So here's a large company with a lot of growth experiencing this. And so of course they're gonna to turn to something like this to try to help them uh, screen out candidates and select people. So here's the challenges that I think we face that some of you mentioned. One of them is I haven't found anybody yet that's really thrilled about doing one. And they're really excited. So I can't wait to do my video interview. It's so much fun and I enjoy it. I like it so much. So I don't think many of us really like it. Well, that's, we gotta, we gotta work to change that mindset because we gotta get to the point where we look forward and enjoy doing them. And so practicing and helping is gonna get us to that point. And we're not really used to working in front of a camera. I remember several years ago, uh, I was working for a company called EDS and it's a, it was an outsourcing IT company. General Motors bought us and they wanted us to do all their outsourcing. And I was in leadership development at the time. And so they said, well, let's create some videos of some things about leadership so we can send it out to these 3000 managers in IT and help acclimate them to uh, the, the style and the, and the ways that EDS, because they were all going to transfer into EDS. So we spent a day and a guy came out and he gave us teaching. And after eight hours, we scrapped the whole thing because <laughs> we were terrible. It was just lousy. He said, forget that idea, it's not gonna happen. We could not look into the camera. We would look, it was, it, it was so funny. I look back on it and I said, I wish I had that video so I could share everybody. I said, this is what I look like doing videos. Everybody get a good laugh. And so it's kind of awkward for us. We feel awkward in doing it. And it's not easy to present ourselves effectively when we're not person to person. We're limited in that. And so I'm not sure that I'm presenting myself. You don't see some of the gestures that I do, depending on my position and how it looks, you know, what, what's, what's in the scene with the video that you see of me. Uh, for example, you see me, I mean, some of us are just ahead and we're real close and we just get ahead up. And I suggest maybe we back up a little bit so you can see some more. In case if I wave my hands, you might see a few fingers missed. So, Anyway, we might feel that we present the wrong way. And of course it's impersonal when you're not having a person in front of you. And it's difficult to make that connection or build a rapport with someone uh, just talking to a machine. Well, that's the problem. We're not talking to a machine. We're talking to a person through a machine. So that's the mindset. We've got to look at that camera and say, I am talking to a person. And that's what I have to be thinking as I'm talking. So. What can we do prior to an interview for over video? Well, same thing you do for any interview. So this is a little interviewing stuff. You have to go through some process to be a really effective inter interview. You really know ourselves. What are we like? What do we enjoy doing? What are our strengths? What's the kind of job we would really prefer? Some of us are at a crossroads as we are now in transition. We have the opportunity to change things. We may change jobs. We may change industries. We may change careers. We, we have some other opportunities and other ways that we might go. So we have to make a decision and make a focus because until you have a focus on a direction and a job and an industry or a company or something like that, how are you going to achieve anything? You can go any direction you want. It's, it's, it doesn't really matter. So that's first. And then you got to get all this marketing materials together. You got to fight with LinkedIn and the resume. I really strongly suggest bios. Biographies are good to help tools for, for networking. So you gotta get all these marketing materials ready. They have to be consistent. And if you're on any uh, Facebook or some of the social medias, you gotta be consistent with that. So there's a lot of work, a lot of things to be done. But once that is all done, you have focus. Now you can work on how you would express that and deliver that. Until you get that focus though, it's very, very difficult to do. So it was great to have target companies, no companies that you're looking for so that you can say, all right, I'm gonna spend my time on the companies I wanna work for, not the ones that I don't know whether I wanna work for them or not. So I wanna do some informational interviews and research. I strongly recommend that you look up and vet companies based on culture. If it's not a culture fit, the rest of it really doesn't matter, for example. So we would like to find that. So I'd like to have that. So, so I know that when I'm doing a video interview, I'm, I'm looking at a company that I wanna work for. I'm looking at a job that I wanna do. My, all those things are in my mindset. Uh, it's kind of hard to do an exploratory interview 
uh, over the uh, over video. However, we still have to do some of those things. We might not have very much information. We may not have very much time to do that. You can go back and look at session uh, one. I think it's a uh, limited time uh, in, in that session on how to prepare for one limited time. But nonetheless, uh, if we get that chance to do some research and I have that preparation and I've, I've done some practicing uh, interviews just basically then, okay, I now I think I can handle the video part. So I've got that part, because if you don't have that, it doesn't, it doesn't help you a whole much with the video side. So let's just look at the video part now specifically. So there's different ways, many of them are remote. Uh, so you'll be at your, wherever you wanna be connected to the internet. Uh, sometimes you go in office and they'll have some remote capability there, some kind of a connection for perhaps it's uh, international or something like that. But it's, it's, it's often uh, simply remote one way or the other. There's the live interviews and there's, there's the pre-recorded interviews. Uh, the live interviews are also can be one way, as we've already discussed, they can be two way. And then there's the pre-recorded, which is becoming more popular, particularly in screening. And then the devices, okay? Well, you can use a lot of different devices today. You can use your computer, a tablet, a smartphone. All you have to have is the correct uh, software on your device so that you can have the video. Then let's look at all of this conferencing software. <laughs> I got VidCruder, SparkHire, My Interview, HireView, Interview Stream, RecWrite, Zoom, and there's about 400 plus more. Uh, we use uh, EasyHire as an example. Uh, donated to us by the Easy Hire people to allow us or uh, give us licenses to use to help job seekers with pricing video interviews. So let me ask you this question. What is the number one mistake that we make in a video interview? What do you think? You can speak, you can chat, whichever. Bad mouthing the last job. The biggest single one comes with you have to figure out what your camera is pointing at and what's, you know, and look at the camera. Like I, I just had to flip the screen over to the one that's in front of the camera. I realized I was sitting here looking like this. Uh, but that, that's your presentation can be as basic as where's your equipment at versus where are you sitting? I, Anita, was that you that said, I, I missed some words that you said earlier. Uh, basically making sure that you're looking oh, oh. at who you're talking to right. and because I, I had to move my image. Usually I have it on my big screen over here, but I, I just moved it back over in front by the camera for the reason of looking at people as opposed to looking at the screen, trying to see what they're saying or what they're doing. And, and there's an example of what can happen during an interview because I'm, I was trying to say Anita, it didn't come across. And so with that communication, there's, there's a lag sometimes in the communication and we don't hear each other. So if I you don't pause. So go ahead, Anita. Thank you, Walt. I heard you, and what I said was actually not the right answer to your question, so I'll take that back. I was just talking about oh. interviews in general, and I didn't miss the word video interviews. Well, most answers are going to be correct, but it might not be the, the top answer, so there's still going to be some, some mistakes. Well, I was just saying in general about video, about interviews, um, to not badmouth the previous job. Oh, oh okay, yeah, all right. That's, that's, not in any, in, that's in any interview. Right. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, here's uh, what I say it is. I'm going to say it's a distraction. Anything that's a distraction. All right. <laughs> a little bit of distraction. And why? All right. Inhibits the listening by the interviewer. So just the way I put that slide together is distracting to you. All right. Say, so, you know, watching the letters, but you're watching them, you're not reading them. <laughs> You're watching what it does, and then you're waiting for the day to thing to stop spinning so you can. So it, it's a distraction, and so lots of things can cause distractions, and so that's one of the things we want to really pay attention to. Uh, I can remember one uh, they talked; they were having a video interview, and, and the as the candidate was looking, the, the panel that he was looking started laughing a little bit and chuckling, and they said, "Well, what what is it?" He said, "Well, your wife just walked behind you, and she wasn't wearing anything." And so that was a distraction in the interview. So I don't know whether she got hired or not, but nonetheless, you have to work out, <laughs> work, worry about a little bit about distractions. You know, the magician uses distraction as a tool for his magic or her magic, right? 
our eyes, if, if we move, if something moves, our eyes will immediately dart to it and it'll look at it. So if there's something going on with uh, us to distract, then we'll start focusing on the distraction instead of the interview. So we want to avoid distractions. And so we'll talk a little bit about that too. So we're going to do some online stuff. We got to prepare some things ahead of time to make sure that online is going to be effective. So now we're looking at technology. So we can want to test our hardware and software. We want to test our cameras. So there's internal cameras, there's external cameras. You can buy webcams and put them on. Uh, you can use uh, headsets. Uh, my question to you is, uh, if you were the interviewer, would a headset distract you from a candidate? Or how about an earbud? Would that distract you? Uh, which one would you prefer? And I would say it depends on your age. <laughs> That's a little bit of an overstatement. But today, technology-wise, earbuds are pretty popular. So you can buy earbuds that have the microphone and hearing in them at the same time, or you can use the headset. But you want to make sure that that is all effective and it works well. Of course, you want to do your internet connection. So speedtest.net is a good place to go look. And I'm talking about upload speed more than download speed. If you know anything about uh, speeds of internets and things like that, there's a download and upload. Upload is always slower than download. You can download pretty, rap pretty rapidly, but you want to have something that has a good upload speed to it. And of course, you've got to be familiar with the interview software. So there's different kinds and you'll have generally opportunities to, to get familiar with that, learn how to navigate it. it it's, really, it's really sad sometimes when uh, as one person got, got confused and said, gee, I don't like that answer. I want to answer it again, but she hit the wrong button and it sent the wrong answer because she didn't, wasn't practiced well enough to use the navigation to understand which way it would, would do so that she could, this particular software allowed you to uh, erase your answer and answer it again. Um, and since I've had two presentations where the power in my PC started dying, I've added number E or the letter E to say, be sure you're plugged in and have sufficient power. I mean, I'm, I'm just talking away and all of a sudden this thing comes up and says, I'm about to die if you don't plug in. And so I have to interrupt myself and get out of my so, so I had to add that one from, from uh, experience of myself. Now, if you happen to be using Zoom, there's just give you an example. In the, in the uh, settings for audio, there's some audio settings that'll come up and it'll say, you can test your speaker and you can test your microphone. Uh, and that's pretty good to do. And by the way, and I added this because sometimes people say, if you want to talk, just press the space bar so you can speak. Well, that does not work unless you've gone into settings and changed that little thing to say, yes, allow the space bar to turn my video or my audio on and off. So you can test that you know, through Zoom. So you can use Zoom to test your equipment, even though you might use some different software to do that. That's the, that's the reason I gave you that. So we got to make sure that our interconnect, internet connection is stable. If you have ethernet connections, and so I have a router, uh, you know, it's connected to uh, my internet provider. And so I can get an ethernet cable and I can use my PC for the cable uh, directly to the router. And now I'm not fighting for bandwidth. Uh, for those of you not familiar with the term bandwidth, it's kind of like turning on all your spigots, all your faucets, in your home at one time. Uh, and that makes all of them slower. Then if you turn them all off, that makes one of them faster. And that's the same thing that happens with bandwidth over the Wi-Fi signals. So close, kill all the other Wi-Fi devices. Now some homes have a tremendous amount of Wi-Fi installed. So you can turn on kitchen lights and turn off this and do this and all that's over Wi-Fi. And it uses bandwidth to accomplish that. Or if you've got iPads and iPhones and you've got four iPhones in the house and all of them are on, those things take up bandwidth. So this is the time when you want to gather all the iPhones, turn them all off, put the kids in the closet, put the dog outside. So you don't have all these things going on well, to, to interfere with you as you're going through your video interview. So with your particular, if you're using like a PC or, uh, you know, I often forget that on my, on my iPhone, that I have to close all these open windows. I mean, it's eating up space and eating up time. There's things going on that some of them we don't like. They know where I am. They know where I'm going before I do. And that kind of worries me a little bit. But all this stuff is going on in the background. So 
if the more you turn off, then the more bandwidth you have for your interview. And that makes things a lot simpler. If you see your picture freezing or your voice, uh, your audio stops for a little bit, then, then you're having bandwidth problems. That's a primary reason. So start turning off all those other devices. Close the windows and things like that. So where do you put the camera? Well, I look at some of you and uh, some of you are looking down at me. Some of you are looking up at me. Some of you, uh, I see your ceiling. Some of you are, you know, it's all different things with the background. And so I wanna position this at least for me. So as I see somebody making corrections out there and that's fine, you go ahead, because this is a great place to practice this stuff. So I like to have an eye level so they're not looking down. I can be looking slightly up or something like that. Now in Zoom, I can do a little side-by-side -side mode and I can put somebody's picture right below my camera, which I often do. And then if I'm looking at that person, it's not, you can't tell the difference between me looking at the camera and that person. Then I get to talk to somebody. <laughs> I'll pick out a person and that's who I'm talking to. So that's a little tip that helps me do that. But always keep it steady, have support. So if you're using your phone or iPad or something like that, you don't want things shaking. That's just another distraction. Now here's the tough part, the quiet, private, well-lit place, free from possible interruptions and distractions, <laughs> all right? So uh, there's an easy sentence to say, and I live in an apartment. It's almost impossible for me to find a good background for that. And I'll, I'll do a little thing with you on backgrounds. But we do need a quiet, private place, all right? Quiet, we don't want noise, we don't. Anything else going on, people walking around in the background, dogs barking, cats in our lap, have cats walk across the keyboard. All those kind of things, we want to make sure none of those things can happen because uh, it's just it's just a distraction. Dress professionally, look like they do, or a little bit better. That's the common uh, thing that you would do in a face-to-face. -face. We want to do the same thing on a video. And find out from the culture what really is appropriate to wear. And if you're going to interview with Amazon, I will not think I would interview in a suit, all right? That culture is not a suit culture. If I'm interviewing with a bank, I might be wearing a suit. So find out what they wear. And also, if there's some things that kind of do messy things with video, uh, some of these finer patterns, uh, they start waving and making lines of darkness and all kinds of things going. So use some soft, solid colors and try to avoid patterns. So a nice soft color, a pastel color is not bad, or even a, a, a solid color is okay. Now, some of you wear glasses, and as you look at your screen, uh, there is a glare that re reflects on your screen. Now, you can tilt your screen a little bit uh, to help maybe help avoid that, or you can use a little bit different lighting. You can try to reduce on using dimming uh, something, but the glare on glasses where, you know, I can hardly see anything, and now I can't even see your eyes. So that also can be a distraction. So you have to work a little bit with your glasses to say, okay, how can I really present myself so that people are looking at me? So I'm, I'm happy to be, uh, I'm looking at Nita. I see a slight glare on your glasses, okay? And for our bass fishermen, you look fine. I don't see any glare on your glasses at all. And practice. I uh, can't emphasize enough about practicing. So we practice interviews and Mark and I, you know, we push practice pretty hard to say, you know, every practice you get better. I uh, like Mark's phrase, practice early, practice often, don't wait. Uh, I, I'm surprised by the number of people who wait until the last minute to say, now I need some help. Well, I know we don't like to make mistakes in front of other people. We don't want to show that we don't know the answers to things and all that kind of stuff. And I say, well, if you really want to learn, put your learning hat on and let that overpower the other side of it. And just come do the best you can, enjoy the interview and learn. So your primary thing is to learn and do that. So one little tidbit of, uh, of information. Uh, I do a lot, I do some coaching, these emergencies. I did one today, you know, I've got an interview tomorrow, please help me out. So I'll give them a few tips with that. I'm sure Mark has those too. Uh, so I call those coaching sessions. And then there's interviewing sessions where interviews are actually. So yesterday, no, it was, it was this morning. Yeah, this morning, 
I actually completed my 1,000th interview. So I've made the mark. So I can say I've done 1,000 of these. And guess what? I've heard 1,000 things over and over and over again. <laughs> Most of them, <laughs> it's, a, it's a lot of same people say, yeah, why, why, do you, why, do you, why do you think you uh, uh, would be a great person for this job? Uh, because my background and experience fits the job. I said, oh, let me make you an offer. So I hear a lot of things over and over and over again. So that's why practice and feedback from people who are in the interviewing mode, in the hiring mode, have had that kind of experience, can give you great feedback as to how you come across. And of course, looking at yourself in the video and how you appear is good practice as well, because I look at myself and say, I got to work on that. It doesn't look as good as I want to. So let me go back to this. Uh, I want to go and show some video, uh, some video stuff. So if you are, can see me, uh, see my video, you might be put on uh, speaker mode or something like that. I'm going to ask you to take a look at, let's see here. What do you think about that one? How about that one? Or that one? Or that one? Uh, if I was a professor in a college, that might be a pretty good one. How about that one? Uh, let me put my astronaut helmet on and I'm, I'm trying, I'm interviewing for an astronaut. I think uh, having the stars in the background would be pretty good. Okay. Uh, how about this one? Somebody tell me what's wrong with this. Not Jeff. <laughs> the video is distracting. The palm tree is waiting. Because I'm thinking about being at the beach. <laughs> Right? Too so much yeah, movement. The, the movement, all right? Now, you know what the most often movement I see in video? Uh, ceiling fans. I see fan blades rotating in the background, okay? Uh, very, very, very distracting on the motion. So let me do a little, let me uh, stop that. And oh, let me get me back to my regular background. That picture looks a little stiff. <laughs> yeah, I was. That's my artificial smile, <laughs> not my natural smile. All right, so let's do a little uh, poll. And so I picked out four backgrounds, and uh, so one of them has Golden Gate, one of them has a, a lattice in the background, one is a home view, and one has the trees. And so you're an interviewer, and you're interviewing me. Which one do you think is the better picture? And then there's E. Now, I politely said none of the above. I could have said, uh, you need to continue working on it, Walt. So take a look at those and say, uh, which one do I think would be a better representation of me to a hiring or to in, into the interviewer's frame of mind? Okay, two people said none of the above. They said, you still got to keep working on it. Uh, there's a dozen that say the gray lattice looks pretty good. Uh, the home scene is out of a couple of people. Nobody likes the Golden Gate. Okay, well, that gives me some feedback to say, because as I'm working myself on improving myself, then I'm, I'm still working on backgrounds as to what might be an effective background. Now, there's an interview background, and then there's these Zoom meeting backgrounds, and they could be a little bit different, but for interviewing. So what am I what am I saying to you with my different, there's a message in my background to you as to what I'm saying. So we wanna find something, and if nothing else, get you a blank screen, put you something on a wall behind uh, so you don't have anything that will distract you. That one I showed you within the library. I don't know about you, but when I first saw that, when I was looking all over at what's in the background with all the books and all the stuff I was interested in all that stuff and so it was very very distracting to me although if I was a professor work trying to uh, get a job uh, at a university that might be an appropriate background all right because it shows uh, that I am that kind of person all right so thank you for that so let's take a look at HireVue, for example. I wanted to choose that as a uh, artificial intelligence software. It's becoming popular. And they use a lot of artificial intelligence to screen candidates and determine whether you're going to make the next step or not, all right? 
and they claim it's the greatest thing since sliced bread and it's better than chocolate and all those kind of stuff. And they say, it's just great to help us. Well, today, hiring is such that if there's anything that will, I can use to help me make a decision rather than going through all the process myself and make my own decision, I'll use it. I'll use it. So I'll use the, the uh, applicant tracking system. I'll, I'll use all those methodologies. I'll do things because it just takes too much time to do a really good job face-to-face, person-to-person. So HireView, they're looking at thousands of different traits, including demeanor, enthusiasm, word choice, tone, cadence, gestures, and posture. They're looking at all of those things to determine whether you should go on or not. I'll tell you why. Then they used to do facial analysis. Uh, been a lot of uh, negative press on facial analysis. So they announced that they have removed that. They were looking at micro expressions on your face as part of the message. And they've come out with a study that said that's really not predictive. So what we're going to use is we're going to, they have increased their ability through what they call language analysis, language processing, and that's all this word choice, tone, cadence, just they've increased that and said that's a much better predictor of success in the role. So they've dropped that. So that's good news because I, I don't know. There's a lot of different facial expressions we have. There's different cultures. There's men, there's women. Uh, I mean, it's so different. Plus, there's some problems with some of this. I'll talk about it in a second. So they look at the competencies and attributes and behaviors of the firm's best employees. That goes into the database, all right? And then they want to hire people like them, all right? And so that builds the profile and gives them job description. Different parameters are set for each industry and company. But uh, behavior is only included if it's shown to be statistically linked to job performance for that role. So I don't know all the background and research and things they've done to say, here's an algorithm that shows this type of behavior that says that matches the performance for this particular job. And they'll, you'll either end up in the top third middle or bottom third in this particular system. But system bias can exist or the data bias contains bias. Well, that's what they say. That's what uh, other people say about uh, AI systems. But I would say that system bias does exist uh, one company uh, ditched HireVue because it started saying that only men were passing to the next step. And they said, well, whatever we put in there is wrong because it's not selecting the, the people that candidates we want. So they just ditched the whole thing. So some people are using it, brave about it. Some people say, no, I'm not using it. And firms likely lean on it more than they like to admit. So how to take a higher view interview? Well, this is what they say. Doing your preparation, make sure you're dressed, all right? Make sure you look into the camera, be aware of your lighting position and background, all right? That's a lot of words. I mean, a few words that says a lot of things. Uh, for lighting, I've got two lamps on each side of me, a little up, up a little high, and you can see two shadows on my face. If I put the hands in the, in the light. And so I'll, I've got no shadows on my face and I'm, and I'm, and I'm lit up, all right? Uh, the picture in the background is actually, it, it is a picture. It is uh, my apartment, uh, but I use that. So, okay, let me try this one out for a while. So you want to log in early because it's going to test system. Make sure you have a microphone, make sure you have uh, speakers and all, this, all the system requirements. And then it checks, uh, after checking those things out, it lets you practice. And they themselves say, we can't emphasize the importance of using the practice questions. They want you to get familiar and feel comfortable and at ease going through the practice. And you can practice a lot. You can keep practicing going through it. They want you to. The reason they want you to practice is because it helps them. It's kind of like uh, I was talking to the uh, head nurse at Texas Health Resources. And they use behavioral event interviewing, star story questions, if you've heard of them. Tell me about a time when you give me an example of. And they were sending out little leaflets or documents with their uh, hiring information to say, we're going to ask you questions like this and answer them in this format. Give me the situation, the task, action, and the result in that format. 
So why do you do that? So it's because we're so tired of people not being able to answer our questions. They can't know how to answer them. So we're going to try to teach them to do that. Same thing here. We want to teach you to use the system to practice and get comfortable and get familiar with it so that you are going to come across a little better. They are tired of seeing first timers not being able to function very well. That's not helping them choose people. So practice. And while you're practicing, you can look at your settings and make sure you're lighting your background, your sound and video all come setting. Then you can play your practice recording and practice as you get comfortable. Then they give you like 30 seconds for a question and up to three minutes to answer and then click and you're done and away it goes. So what should we do during the video interview? We got any questions coming up about anything? There uh, have been a couple. Leslie asked, how do you ensure the recording are properly managed and not sold or distributed to third parties? Yeah. <laughs> I think that's a great question for Friday. It, it really is. It, it really is. Uh, that's something that I would think I would, when the interview is set up, I would ask that question. That is a great question to say, uh, how are you, because that's one of the problems and the issues with video interviewing is that your image is captured and you don't have control over that. And so that's one of the issues that came up, said the uh, privacy is one of the concerns for a video. Well, one, one of the new things on Zoom starting this, starting Monday, I noticed is that when I started the recording button, it popped and said, you know, it announced to everybody that we're now recording and you have to agree to continue or you can leave the meeting. So right. that's a new feature that Zoom has implemented system-wide for everybody. I don't know about Team and some of the other softwares, but at least Zoom is uh, uh, being very proactive. And I can't turn that off. I went and looked, and there's no way to, huh. to do that. So they're trying to help out with that, saying you get permission. So, yeah, but I would definitely, I think that's a great question, too. Uh, and I would ask that to say, you know, how long do you keep these? What do you use them for? Et cetera, because they keep stuff on database. Good question. Ask them. And tell them that you would like them to uh, send you something that tells you that they would delete that or whatever you're concerned about, how you want to resolve that. Uh, second question, Lenora asked, what about wearing company colors or the colors of the alma mater of the interviewer? If you have something in common with an interviewer, yes. Now, if you're just wearing them to say, well, I know you're from Texas Tech. You went to Texas Tech. And they come and say, where did you go to school? Say, Texas. Well, I don't know if that would work out too well. <laughs> so uh, that's kind of a little, you know, if, if, if you want to recognize the school, say, I know, I know about the school. Uh, I know something about the school that you go to. And I know what its reputation is. And you think it's good. And you're giving a compliment to the school or something like that. Yeah, you might want to do it that way. But. Uh, you want to be careful that you're not coming across and trying to say, I'm using a gimmick in order to gain your favor. I would think something subtle would be okay. A tie, a little pin or something would be fine. You wouldn't want to change your background to match the color of the university or the company color or something. That would be, I think, a bit over overkill. You might get some longhorns coming out of your ears if you wanted to. <laughs> They have these things patched now. So if they went to Texas, you might attach some longhorns to your face. Uh, Phil asked, how can we use Zoom to try monkeying with how the end results look to others? That's the word. Repeat, please. Uh, how can we use Zoom to try monkeying with how the end result looks to others? Monkey. Also answer that monkeying. I mean, how can you mess around with the different settings? I oh. mean, I think the whole key is everybody can get a free Zoom account. The free Zoom account allows you to record up to 40 minutes. You can have a 40 minute session with one other person. So you can play with it. You can record it. You can see what it looks like. You can play it back or you can have a session with somebody else and go, you know, you need to change this. So, you know, just connect with somebody else and, and you know, have them and get their opinion. So I mean, you have complete control of the camera position and the lighting and your background. Um, so, and, and maybe the question is, you know, do you, is what you see what other people see? And for Zoom, it absolutely is. I mean, what, what you're seeing on your screen is what other people see. 
almost exactly. And uh, so there's there's no, you know, you don't get, and uh, what you see, you know, on your computer is not any different at all in any way, so. Okay, other questions? Oh okay. yeah, Bill also asked about the shimmer and the, when you use a background like I'm using, this this is what happens. And so I don't, I don't recommend that. It takes processing power, computer spending a lot of time trying to block out the stuff that's behind me and, and substitute this uh, you know pretty plain screen. And so that's what happens when you move, it can't keep up. Uh, for a, a real interview, you just need to have a simple background that is the, is the real thing. Yeah, that helps now. One of the things that I suggest in a real interview when you go face to face is that you have a questions list prepared and you put it out on the table for them to see that you have a prepared questions list. Uh, the, the idea is that interviewers see that you're prepared, you've done some research, you know what you want to ask, you want to do, and that's a positive thing. So when I'm online, I say, I'd like to show you that, hey, I have, a, I have some question list here that I want to show you <laughs> that I had to ask you, and this is what it looks like. <laughs> oh, you don't have any questions, huh? And so the document is not going to come out when there's a little background. So, yeah. All right. What should we do during the video interview? Log in early. Always be a little bit early. Uh, I would suggest that you log in anytime you're on a Zoom meeting. Log in a little bit early. Use your Zoom meetings today, the link like you're attending today, to uh, practice your background, practice uh, your equipment. All, all the things you we can do now is this is something. I mean, I see a lot of uh, people that uh, just stop their video. And this is some reasons for that. I'm not complaining or criticizing, but it is an opportunity for us to say, well, let me let me put my video on there, and I might uh, send out a little chat to somebody towards the end of the meeting after the meeting. So I would say, hey, how, what do you think of my background? And see, maybe ask a few people to give that some information to you, see what it's like. But always, always be. Uh, on time. It's critical. They can be late. It's fine. They can do anything they want. They, they get all the rules. They get to ask all the information. They, they, we have to tell them everything. They don't, we don't, they don't have to tell us anything. I mean, that's just the way it goes. But be sure that you log in early. Smiling is probably the best thing that we can do to show some kind of rapport and building something and showing ourselves as uh, open uh, trusting, all that kind of thing comes through a smile. But it's not a technique. It has to come from within. So if you've heard my discussion about that and Jeff showing his smiley faces, yeah, you can put that around your camera and mount that up there so it reminds you to smile. I've been learning, I've been practicing smiling since 1971. I still don't do it enough, <clears throat> but smiling. So if you are enthused about the job, enthused about the company, excited, have some interest in the job. If you don't have to jump on the table and dance, but you're really interested in the job, you will naturally show gestures and facial expressions and things like that that represent smiling and energy and those kind of things. So it comes from within. So it's your mindset. So smiling is, is important, uh, particularly in your greeting. Generally, everybody smiles in the greeting and then they kind of disappear. That's kind of me. I'll smile. Oh, yeah, I got to smile. So remembering to smile. So you practice smiling, all right? Practice smiling. So here's a hard one. It's simple, but it's a hard one. That's really to look into the camera when you're speaking. Um, now, if I want to look over here and I can see Jeff and I can see Richard, and I can see Mark and I'm looking there. So I'm talking to Jeff. This is what it looks like, all right? Well, I'm not making eye contact with you. So I got to go back to that camera and look right straight into that camera's eye. And so when I'm talking, I'm looking at the camera. Now, when they're talking, I get to look at them, all right? So I can take my eyes off. Also, you don't have to have 100% continual eye contact or looking into the camera. You're allowed to think. Sometimes we don't practice that. We don't practice the pause, but we're allowed to think. And thinking kind of takes our mind off of looking at people. And almost naturally, our body will, once we start thinking about something, we will look away. And we'll not focus on anything because we're thinking. Sometimes our eyes will wander because we're trying to put together. That's a natural body reaction that you're not going to be able to stop, nor should we. But don't talk if you're thinking, right? Wait until you finish thinking before you start speaking. 
but you can look at them and get some idea and reaction with them. So the, the general rule is when speaking, looking at the camera, when talking, when they're talking, you can look at them. Keep your good posture, all right? Uh, it says lean in slightly. Well, lean in slightly is a result of how you speak. It's not, again, a technique. I almost want to remove that from the slide because then I want everybody to lean in slightly. Well, <laughs> did you get something out of that? Did that give you a thrill? Because I leaned in, no, not. Didn't really do anything, right? <laughs> But when you're truly interested and you want to talk to somebody, you will kind of, you know, you'll just kind of do this because that's what you're talking about. You're getting a little bit closer. All right. Always be authentic. That doesn't matter what kind of interview it is. Always be authentic and display genuine energy and interest. Nodding is going to help. All right. I was, I was talking with a person who has her grandchild just graduated from the third grade and they, and they stopped wearing masks. And and teachers didn't recognize who they were. <laughs> and so that, that's kind of sad. I'm laughing at it, but it's really kind of sad. And so here, if we, uh, if we nod once in a while and give them some visual cues that we're hearing what they're saying, we like what they're saying, that's a good one. Uh, I even say gestures and I sometimes try to put my hands out. I like to put myself away from the, a little bit away from it and not put myself real close so that I'm looking like this. I give myself a little bit more of a body posture for you to look at. All right, that might help. Deliver a statement of enthusiasm. That doesn't matter whether it's video or not, but in the beginning, showing your enthusiasm for the job or interest in the job is really key. So that opening statement, uh, Jeff and Mark and I uh, were able to look at some sample videos from Easy Hire and uh, listen to a few people answering them. Uh, Jeff, I'll let you tell your own story of what you thought about listening to those answers. Well, they were horrible. They, they were un, unwatchable. After about 10 seconds, you went, okay, next, because it was just like, it wasn't worth, I mean, the clothes, the angle, the camera, their background, I, I you know, you. You got to give people a reason to want to listen to you. And if you have any kind of distraction in the background, that's not going to happen. Yeah. So it, if you put yourself in the seat of the interviewer, uh, I can remember uh, one of the workshops that I did, you know, and I video people in the workshops uh, before we were doing face to face. And I came into the pit crew, it had to be a pit crew meeting. And he said, well, I, I took Walt's workshop and I, I looked at the video and I wouldn't hire that guy for anything. <laughs> no way. Uh, you, you didn't like what, well, so we need to know and practice and see how we appear to others so that we can fix that, all right, and correct that. Uh, and it comes from your mindset. The more comfortable you are, the more prepared you are, the more comfortable you can be, and then you can start engaging and talking and doing that. But if you're just praying you can answer questions, your mindset is not going to be one of uh, less, it just shows anxiety, it shows concern and stress and all that sort of thing. So, Deliver that statement, be, be a different person than most people when you greet them and pause before speaking. Why? Because you wanna form a nice, clear, concise response. Interviewers would rather you stop and think and deliver a nice, clear, concise response than you just start talking, trying to figure out what the answer is. But online, it also helps because we experienced that earlier where we were talking over each other and the right message didn't get across. So we want to pause to make sure that the technology is allowed to communicate effectively over the internet. So we might cut out words. Avoid touching our face. This is a pretty popular thing to do. It's one that we don't realize that we're doing. But if I touch my face, if I do something, uh, it's very, very noticeable and it's very, very distracting. So I can remember there's been times when the end of my nose was itching fiercely <laughs> and I just I just wanted to scratch it so I scratched it and then I came back and said okay we'll continue <laughs> well that doesn't work either but be cognizant and that's what video practicing will help you do you can see you doing some things that you don't really want to do so in summary and finally we are not talking to a machine that's our mindset well I'm talking to a camera I'm not I'm not I'm thinking the wrong thing I'm talking to a person. So as we go through this, we have to imagine that we are talking to a person and speak and do it that way. Now, if you've got that kind of mindset, 
you're way ahead of the rest of the crew because you will be looking at that camera. You'll be interested in saying, you'll be talking with your genuine, authentic way. You are doing some gestures. You'll be smiling when you, when you, when you talk. Uh, so even if it's one way or whatever it is, you want to come across so that when they look at it, it's going to be so different than what other people do that you're way ahead of the game. All right. Other questions? Well, Lee wants to know, can you take a drink while on a video interview in case, in case your mouth is dry? Sure. Uh, <laughs> I mean, a lot of places are going to offer you a cup of water or a bottle well, of water. Well, what you might want to say is, uh, give me a break. A second. My mouth's getting dry. Let me take a little sip and, you know, and announce that and say it and do it and kind of get permission to do it. You know, they often will let you do it inside of a regular interview. You can do it here. Right. But it can be distracting. So the way to avoid the distraction is says, my mouth's kind of dry. Give me a second to take a sip. And then you get permission to do that. You take your sip, and then you go on. Yeah. Is Charles a good idea? Yeah. Uh, Kathy said, I had an interviewer look to the side the entire time of the video. Would it have been rude to ask if they were looking at my resume or me? Well, I'm looking to the side because my second monitor is where my chat is right now. So I wouldn't assume just because they're looking to the side, they could be looking at you on their second monitor because their camera was over here, but their monitor's over here. You know, I mean, you could go move, I could go move my camera so it's facing over here, but it's just uh, how, how that setup is. So I, you know, you never know what they're looking at when they're off to the side. It's just, it's very difficult. I put that in the category of correcting the interviewer. There is a time to correct the interviewer, and that's after you're hired. In the meantime, you're on their agenda, you're doing it their way. And so if it bothers you that they're not looking at you, then you should be looking at the camera anyway. You shouldn't be noticing that they're looking the other way. But anyway, yeah, just let it go. Just let it go. And uh, I've got to it. Say, so, okay, I'll look into the camera, I'll do my best. You know, Lenora says you need a green screen behind you to avoid the shimmering. That's not true because when you're using a green screen or when you're using any kind of uh, processing, when you're having the computer do that processing to get rid of the background or to insert a background, uh, it's still using that same computer processing power. So if you're doing an interview and you want to use your hands, you need to make sure you keep them within your shoulders because that way they don't disappear. But if you do this, this is where it starts getting all funny. And if you're doing this all through the interview, you're going to be distracting anyway. So, you know, for the most part, you're going to keep yourself pretty uh, focused on the camera when you're talking. And if you need to say something, you're going to, you know, try to keep it within your shoulders so that the hand does, if you're using a fake, if you're using a background. Let me add a couple of things about the size of your head. So this, this, what I've got set up here is, uh, I'm not an expert on this, but this is what I've been told is you want a little space up here at the top. Okay, and uh, that's, that's about the right size. So, you know, Jeff's got his, he's a little farther out, but you know, a little space at the top of the head. Uh, you don't want your head cut off, you don't need too much space. So that's the, uh, that's what I've heard. The other thing I wanna, just mention, and Walt said it, but let me reinforce it. Audio problems are aggravating. I gotta say, it's it's more than distracting. It's aggravating when you're the interviewer. So if you have to wear earbuds or if you have to wear over the ear headphones with a boom because you tend to move your head, you know, you turn from side to side, and that'll cause the audio to fade. Then uh, go ahead and do it. Okay, you want to to be able to communicate effectively. And if that's blocked somehow, it's, it's bad. It's just bad, <laughs> bad for your prospects. Any other questions? Well, that's a good point somebody made. Uh, just certainly when you take a drink, it's not gonna be out of a beer can or your brandy sniffer, right? So oh, come somebody... on, that takes all the fun out of it. <laughs> right. I like that, Richard. That, that, that was good. <laughs> yep. Well, that's
that's why you can do like Johnny Carson does. You can always put your gin in the coffee cup. So yeah, there you go. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, Walt and Mark, thank you very much for your uh, time today. Just uh, as a reminder, Crew to FW and Crew USA, we're putting on training five days a week. Every Monday, networking. Tuesday, LinkedIn. Every Wednesday, interviewing. Every Thursday, we talk about resumes. Every Friday, the North Dallas Plano Career Focus Group and Women of Wisdom. Uh, oops, let's see here. Uh, so coming up tomorrow for Effective Resume Thursdays at 1 o'clock, we'll talk about resume tips and tricks. Uh, on Friday, uh, we'll, uh, our speaker is uh, Alicia Vaultmore, and she's going to talk about labor law. She's a labor law attorney. She represents companies. Uh, this event will not be recorded. She doesn't want it recorded because we may talk about things that uh, shouldn't be uh, put back out on the internet or whatever. I'll delete it off of Facebook as soon as the session's over. If you have any questions that you'd like to ask a labor law attorney, please get them to me by five o'clock this afternoon so that I can forward them on to her. But uh, if you're interested, it's all sort of an interesting uh, little uh, session. And you can't mention anything about companies. So we don't talk about any company. Company A, company B, company C is okay. All right, next uh, Monday for Networking Mondays, it's uh, Memorial Day, so we will not have a session. We're going to take the day off. On Tuesday, for LinkedIn Tuesdays, how to use LinkedIn for job hunting, strategies to get results. And then next Wednesday, we'll be on lesson number five, analyzing the job description. The session has been recorded. It is going to be on the Career DFW Facebook page and the Career USA YouTube channel. Uh, it's probably easier to go to the YouTube channel, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel, because when you do, every time we post a new video, you'll find out about it here on the YouTube channel, Career USA YouTube channel. Uh, if playlist doesn't pop up, click on playlist where you see the red arrow. And then down below, don't click on the video, but click down below where it says view full playlist for whatever list you want. And when you do that, up will come a list of all the different sessions, the dates and the sessions and the names. So you can pick the session if you need to uh, catch up on something, if you want to review something that we've already talked about. So, if you're not receiving emails about our workshops, uh, please, you can join the Career USA mailing list. Please send an email to Career USA, the plus sign, uh, subscribe at groups.io. Uh, you'll get six or seven emails a week. You'll get the daily, whatever the today's lesson is going to be, along with the Zoom link. So you won't have to... Uh, you know, go look for it. You'll get that in your inbox if you're not getting those emails. Uh, please note, uh, Career DFW, we're a 501c3 nonprofit organization. We have no full or part-time employees. Walt's a volunteer, Mark's a volunteer. Everything I've done over the last 13 years has been as a volunteer. Career DFW, we survive on donations. It helps pay for Zoom. It helps pay for the web names, the web host, the web hosts that we have to pay for, anything I can't get donated. So please consider making a donation when you can get to your next job. Uh, we are looking for a couple, some help in a couple different areas. If you know anybody who has Joomla experience, please have them reach out to me. I'm also looking for somebody who has MySQL experience. And if you know an attorney who has trademark experience, uh, please have them reach out to me. I'd really, really appreciate it. So thank you for joining us today, Mark and Walt. Thank you once again for your time. And uh, hopefully we'll see you later in the week or see you next week. I, ha I have a thing to add. You were talking about uh, stabilizing stuff for, for the video. These little things right here, you can get at Container Store and a couple, you'll 